Welcome to Dartmouth-Hitchcock. I am thrilled that you're here and that you have chosen us to be your future because you can be whatever you want to be when you, uh, when you come here to Dartmouth-Hitchcock. We have a pathway to everything. And so I like to come and welcome you and kind of give you what to expect from us and what I expect from you as your leader. And I am very proud to be your leader. And that's one of our, our main tenets is pride. I want you to be proud that you're a DH nurse. How many people called their families and texted their friends that you got selected to be at Dartmouth-Hitchcock. Yeah, right? How excited. I remember when I first came here six years ago, I thought, that's Dartmouth-Hitchcock. It's like where Meredith Grey went, right? <laughs> All right, this is so cool. But we have an amazing reputation um, internationally for being a quality, amazing place to work. So pride, I want you all to be proud. Every single day when you come to work, I want you to put on whatever uniform you're wearing that day and be proud to walk in those doors. It's gonna be hard. You're gonna have some pretty long days. You're gonna have some pretty tough days. We do this for a living, right? We went into nursing wanting to help people, and sometimes that, that work that we do is extremely difficult. So, so the second line that we talk about is um, compassion, because that's what we do, right? Do you think patients come here for fancy medicine? Do you think they come here for the fancy building? or the fancy equipment? Well, yeah, they kind of do, but they expect that, right? They expect when they come to Dartmouth-Hitchcock, they're gonna get the state of the art, fancy medicine, fancy surgery, high quality care. But what do patients really come to Dartmouth-Hitchcock for? Personalized care. Nursing care, right? They come here for nursing care. They come here and they say, here is my life. Please don't hurt me, don't let me die. Take good care of me and be nice to me. Right? Does a patient ever come and say, no, I don't want you to take good care of me? Don't want you to be nice to me? And it's getting harder and harder. Our patients are sick. Sick, sick, sick patients here at Dartmouth-Hitchcock. And they need us even more than ever. You know, the, the um, baby boomers are hitting. I heard of statistics that uh, next year, um, the, the higher end of the baby boomers are going to be 75. So we have about 25 or 30 years of taking care of a very large population of ill people. Baby boomers weren't known to take care of themselves. So we have a lot of patients to take care of. And so you've got to bring your compassion. You've got to bring your A-game every single day. Every one of us, leaders, bedside nurses, um, IT, housekeepers, the finance people, every single person, the people in dietary, they were my favorite people. <laughs> I was a patient for a long time, and they were my favorite people. Okay? The snack lady was my favorite person. But we all bring something to the bedside of the patient. So you've got to bring your A-game every single day. And that's going to be hard when you've been up all night with a sick dog or you've been up all day because your neighbor's car alarm kept going off. I worked nights for many, many years. Or you don't feel well yourself, right? Patients don't really care if you're not on your A-game. They need you to be on your A-game. So how do you do that? How do you make sure you're on your A-game every single day? It's finding what your resilience is. Resilience is kind of our last, it's a you know, kind of tagline. And it's going to be different for every single one of you. Who likes the outdoors? Oh, everybody should have their hand up. <laughs> Take a look around. Who likes to ski? Oh, good. Snowshoe? Hike? Yeah. So Upper Valley is full of amazing activities. Find your resiliency. Uh, make sure, I love to cook. That's my resiliency when I get home who likes to cook. I get home, I take that lovely sharp chef's knife, and I cook. And it's really good for me. I love to do it. Um, but find your resiliency. You know, we offer a lot of programs here when you've had a particularly tough day or a tough, challenging patient. We have peer support groups. We have an amazing chaplaincy program. When we have an event, we swarm it right then. We don't wait two or three or four or five, six days. We swarm it right on shift because, you know, nurses are leaving this profession in droves within five years because of the workplace violence and the acuity and seeing, seeing some of the things that we see. And I don't want that. I want you all to find a long career here. I've been a nurse for 32 years. I'm an ER flight trauma nurse. I've seen some stuff. But you've got to find that resiliency to come back in the next day with your A game on. And you've got to be able to say hey, hey, to your leader, hey, I'm, I'm struggling today. And they're going to swarm you with resources. You're going to have peers on your units that you can talk to. You're going to have mentors. Find a mentor. Hopefully, we'll connect you with a mentor. But find that resiliency. Because your 12-hour shift, for those who are doing 12s, may be 14. And you've got to come back and what? What's the math? 
Got to drive 45 minutes? Can be long days, right? I always said, bring a bag lunch and a big bladder, <laughs> right, when you're a nurse. So really, that's, you know, I like to come and kind of share that. What you expect from us is the same thing as your leaders. All right, for those of you in inpatient, ambulatory, periop. So you have leaders that you have local leaders, you have um, directors, you have some vice presidents. There's me, my door is always open. I round um, every single day you'll see me. Not every day, but I round every day. So hopefully I'll see you. I'll remember your faces. I promise you I will not remember your names. <laughs> There's 6,000 of you here on this campus alone. But I will remember you because I'll see you and you'll like, oh, you'll, or you'll go, hmm, yeah, who's that? But uh, usually, and at the very end of this, um, we're going to go around and talk about why you became a nurse, okay, because then I'll remember your story. But at times throughout your career, you're going to have to go back to that why. Why am I doing this job? Why do I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and drive in for my shift? Sometimes you have to go back to that why. I've done it many times in my career, and I'm really, really glad of what I do. But what I expect of you, or we expect of you, exactly what you should expect from us and you're amazing educators as well. We have an amazing group of educators because nursing is a lifelong learning event. Again, 32 years, I still don't know everything. And the way medicine is changing every single day, I promise you they don't let me touch medicine anymore. I don't get to touch the pumps or give drugs or anything like that because I don't keep up with that, right? But we, it's a lifelong learning. I um, spent the morning at a, a leadership session about coaching because that's our job, learning how to coach and mentor so lifelong learning is super important, and we can help you get to where you want to be. Whether that's an educator, you could be a leader, you could be me someday. That'd be great. You could be an advanced practice nurse, you could be a CRNA, you could get into research, you could be a care manager, you could be IT, nursing IT, it's a growing field. But you could be whatever you want to be, and we want to help you there. So that is what being a nurse at Dartmouth-Hitchcock is all about. Everybody excited to be here? You got a couple of grueling days of orientation. We all have to do that, but it's super important. How many new grads in the room? Welcome. You are an elite group of people. We had over 400 applicants. We took 100-ish, 110, out of 400 applicants. So welcome. You guys are the A-team. And then I have my experienced nurses. Thank you for being here. And that's your job to help teach the next generation because we have to do that. So welcome to Dartmouth-Hitchcock. Before I get going with what is your why, ask me anything. What kind of questions do you have? Yes, ma'am. Why did I become a nurse? I think I, I've wanted to be a nurse since I was in second grade. Most of you in the room, there's a couple that might remember the yellow primer paper that we used to learn <laughs> cursive on. All right, you're laughing. It's true. We learn cursive. And then my mom framed My mom's a nurse. Um, and I wrote, when I grew up, I'm going to be a nurse. She convinced me to go to pre-med. Huh. <laughs> I lasted uh, one semester and one week. I was sitting in a class of 500 people of zoology. Who took that class? Ugh. And I got up, walked over, and enlisted, uh, enlisted, uh, transferred, felt like it at the time, transferred into nursing. And I never looked back. Um, and again, I've, I've wanted to be a midwife at some point. I have no idea. I wanted to be, I was in the Army. I served many years in the active duty Army Nurse Corps and was, had orders to be a CRNA when uh, Desert Storm happened and was put in charge of the, the ER. Hence my leadership, and you're a leader in the military. Um, so I really, I'm very proud to have served my country as well. Uh, it, it really gave me great skills, but I want to make a difference. I want to make a difference every single day, whether it's opening a door for somebody, getting something off the top shelf at the store. If you didn't notice, I'm 60 with some shoes on. I'm always being asked that, but make a difference. It's not the fancy stuff, it's the warm blanket in the middle of the night, in the ER, when the family member's been up all night or the patient, because we freeze patients out here, right? It's that cup of coffee for the family, the mother who's been up for three nights with her very ill child. It's holding the hand of a dying man who's 97 years old and has lived a very full life. That's, for me, making a difference. I get letters every single day, and it's not about the, you know, the doctor or the fancy machine. It's about that nurse who made a difference in their life that moment. And it's the little things, I promise, you're going to be like, all I did was this, or I did was my job. Absolutely. But that impact that you had on that family is, an, is enormous. And they will remember you for the rest of your life, their life. We have the DAISY Award. Everybody know the DAISY Foundation? 
I got to meet the daisies. I mean, the um, Mark and um, their Barnes, Mark and Bonnie Barnes. He's the father of the the man that died, and uh, we have we give a daisy award every quarter. And it's from families who just, you make that difference. It's a big deal. So please make a difference every day with each other, with families, with patients. But it's about being a team here. But that's why I became a nurse, and I love it. I get up every day excited to come to work. They're long days, but I do love my job. All right, so we're going to go around the room. And I'd like to know your name, where you went to school, what unit you worked in, and why you became a nurse.